All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number two of Vaginas and Vertebrae. And we um, are actually figuring out the video thing. So we were just checking our teeth to make sure I didn't have spinach in there. And I'm pretty sure I still have pepper and stuff, but it is what it is. So yeah, we are at a Craft Cafe on Central. I know I always get confused. So we are on the one in Pasadena. Yeah. Yep, and I just had their their craft sandwich and it was delicious. And now I'm drinking a pumpkin coffee. Well, I'm not extra. I don't like pumpkin spice, but I actually like pumpkin flavored coffee because I don't like the super sweet stuff. So it's perfect, and it's just got that like uh, brown sugar taste to it. So it's delicious. But anyways, welcome to Vaginas and Vertebrae episode number two. We're super pumped to be here again. Hopefully you caught our introduction last week. This week, we are going to tell you a little bit about our backstory and kind of, um, I always think about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air anytime I share my backstory. You know, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. <laughs> so Madeline, why don't you just take us through what brought you to being a chiropractor, what brought you to have a like what, what's your journey look like? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was and she realized her asthma got better and she didn't need her healer anymore. She could play sports better. I got adjusted when I was younger. I had no idea why. No clue at all. We were just fortunate our mom was a massage therapist that worked in a chiropractic office. So anyhow, fast forward, like through undergrad, you kind of knew she was heading down that path to prep for chiropractic school. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I just love the body, so. Um, yeah. Sorry, I had to clarify. Identical twin. <laughs> Shout out to Johanna. Anyways, so yeah, so. I graduated undergrad with a degree in exercise physiology, and then I started personal training. So I was like, you know, I love the body. I love to work out. So, like, how cool would that be? Well, it wasn't super, <laughs> I didn't love it. It wasn't super cool for me. I wanted more. I wanted to help people more, and I wasn't really sure what that looked like. So, I went and just shouted a bunch of dogs, shouted PTs, OTs, all that stuff. And at the end of the day, I was like, well, I really want to help people with their health. I know that we can be healthy and live this vibrant life. We can just give our bodies a chance to thrive in that environment. I was like, well, it's chiropractic. I just never considered it because it was always Johanna's thing. Right? So I asked her, and she's like, no, that's cool. You can go do it. So I applied, and I went to school, and here I am three years later, out in practice, and I was like, yeah. But when, when I reflect back on that and look at it, I just think, like, over time, it's just been a kind of journey that's led me here. When I talked about, we're going to talk about this these episodes about self limiting beliefs and trauma that's happened in our past. So many things that have happened to me have set me up for where I am today. Some of that is like our extended family has massive health issues between like cancer and like all these health lifestyle ones. And um, I just didn't want to go down that path. Like it made sense to me that like, if you take care of your body and you put it in the right environment, put the right things in it, that you don't have to get all of those diseases or have all those issues. Yeah. So. I'm um, very fortunate that I kind of picked up on that early, and now I get to help educate people in that way and empower them to take control of their health, which is pretty cool. So three years of practice, when I first graduated, I took a job at St. Thomas, which was, I mean, the island was cool. That's, that's a different island. It's an island to you, U.S. Virgin Island. Yeah. Well, that's cool. How long were you there? Only a summer, because... I think all things, there's a story and the job didn't work out. That's probably a story for another day. But I did get the summer there. I came back. I started working in St. Pete because that's where my sister was. And she was practicing in a different office, so there wasn't much space at the time. And I found another wellness office to work at. And it just, it was, I, you learn in all situations. It just wasn't 100% my place. Um, I really struggled finding my place as a chiropractor. So I had left and work, started working at the office my sister was at and did that for a little bit. I learned and again, just wasn't 100% myself or authentic. It was really hard to stay there. So I ended up leaving and Jana ended up opening her own practice a year ago. So a year ago in September. And she opened Atlas Chiropractic Center, which is now where she's at, where we're both at. And I joined in June because she got pregnant. Yeah, so she needed help, which is all like, I've been like begging for this whole time. I'm like, please let me practice with you. I want to practice with you. We would do so well together. Yeah. 
and then she was pregnant, so it worked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For being. I think one of the reasons I love it, and I think it's funny because I sent a voicemail to you the other day, or a message trying to tell you this the other day, is that um, the true care project and what it's about, like, of course, it helps with pain relief and all those things. But why I love chiropractic so much is, is working on just helping your nervous system function better, which is like the first thing that's created when your body's like when you're forming in the womb, it controls everything in your body. So it's just so cool to be able to help people on that level. And if they're functioning at a higher percent, then they're able to heal better, they're able to move better, they're able to do all the other things they want to do better. So it's just that, like, if you're a really healthy person and you're not doing chiropractic because you think it's just for pain relief, it's kind of like that extra, like, icing on top of the cake. It can just make your life a little bit better than you even thought it could be, which is pretty bad. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
doing my coffee over here. <laughs> That'll help, I think. Awesome. So I guess it's my turn then. Yeah, it's also sorry. I don't know if we have time for that. We'll I know. But well, I feel like we'll keep getting deep. Well, we keep filling those layers of ice. No, I have always actually known that I wanted to be a physical therapist. I started as a ballet dancer when I was three years old. And I became a, like, I was obsessed ever since that age and classical ballet was my thing and everybody's like oh that's so boring and I was like well it was my gift I was very good at it I loved it I would do it six days a week forever um I got pretty injured I rolled one of my ankles when I was like 13 and of course you know only took a couple weeks off because that's what dancers do you're performing constantly and you're consistently going Mind you, shout out to my mother for taking me to dance practice six days a week. And I did not realize how expensive ballet was until I got older. Um, I don't know why she let me do that, but <laughs> I was very good at it and I really enjoyed it. But we, um, six days a week, I was just dancing all the time. I injured myself. It was like the end of the world. I fell into this, like, uh, I would say it was probably a depressive mode. There's a lot of layers behind that, but I fell into this mode of like, I couldn't dance the same. And so I didn't go to physical therapy that first time. I actually just got over it myself. We wrapped it. And like um, the teacher that I had at that point, she was Russian. It was really funny. She made me soak my foot in vinegar and we wrapped it up with brown paper bags. It was like this old school remedy. And I swear it worked, but I think it was just because I was like placebo to myself. I was like, it's going to work. And so it did. Um, so we rehabbed my ankle myself. I got back after like two weeks. Uh, and again, not to toot my own horn, but I was always like the star like dancer. I was always at front because one, I was tiny, like itty bitty. And so you couldn't see me if I was anywhere else. But secondly, I was just so passionate about it. And so all the roles that required you to be up front, that was like where I was. So I really enjoyed dance. Um, but unfortunately, after that one ankle sprain, there was just a whole slew of them after because I didn't rehab and I didn't do any training that would prevent it from occurring again. I didn't do any taping techniques. I didn't do any strengthening that I needed because in classical ballet, when you're performing, it's like four performances back to back. You don't have time to actually like rehab, right? So finally, it was like a down season and I went to a physical therapist because it was just like excruciating pain to find out that I had been dancing on a stress fracture for a really long time. And it never healed. Luckily, I haven't had to have surgery, but my ligaments were like spaghetti noodles, like cooked ones. It was bad. And so um, that physical therapist that I went to, I was still pissed off about this shit, but they were like, you shouldn't be dancing. They literally told me not to dance anymore. And I was like, uh, okay. And I walked out of there and never went back, of course. Uh, went back to dance. Well, my ankle again. This time it was a lot worse. Um, I couldn't walk. I was having a lot of trouble with it. And a lot of hip pain and back pain came from that because I was compensating and I was trying to use my other side and went to another physical therapist. This one is the one that changed my life. His name is Thomas Nosowski. He's in Tennessee. He's probably listening. He's like my number one fan. Um, and he just completely changed everything about how I learned about my body because at that point, I had also been struggling with an eating disorder and I was going through all of these issues that unfortunately is very common in dance and also just young women. And I was struggling a lot and he got me pretty much rehabbed and, and never told me that I had to quit dance. And so we got back, I had to tape my ankles because they were just like bandy at one stage. <laughs> Cause I was on point, like on my toes all, all the time. And so he pretty much saved my life and kept me dancing for those last several years. And I, at that point, was like, I want to be a physical therapist. And I think I was 16 at that point. So I started to observe, became his technician and all this good stuff. Um, when I was 17, I was actually sexually assaulted. And from that point on, I had felt floor dysfunction. So I had the wobbly ankles. I had the back pain. I had been told I had scoliosis several times, but I didn't know what that was. So I was just like, whatever. I don't have pain in my back. You're good. Like, moving on. And at that point, I don't think I really knew how to process pain. I think I was ignoring it. So um anyway, so after that happened I was like leaking urine and then I couldn't have sex because it was just super painful. And it was just like the weirdest experience. So for like two years I was just like mentally not where I needed to be. I was emotionally not where I needed to be for obvious reasons. Um met my now husband at the age of 19 and um shout out to Bill. He's given lots of shout outs today. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why he stuck around because I was not very nice to him because of all the things that I was going through. But I 
ended up finally getting into PT school. It took me a while to go because I couldn't get accepted, which was super weird, which is a whole like pre PT thing. It's so competitive to get into. Um, I had the grades, I had the scores, I had everything, but for some reason I couldn't get accepted. I personally believe it's because I wasn't in the right place to go to school, but that's just where I was. I got accepted and three weeks later, we packed up all our stuff, moved from Tennessee to Florida and went to PT school. <laughs> Um, got through the program, loved the program, uh, learned all kinds of things about the spine and the joints and manual therapy, and it was beautiful, but didn't know anything about pelvic floor. Graduated with my physical therapy doctorate degree, still didn't know anything about pelvic floor, um, and I was still suffering with pelvic floor dysfunction, by the way, and then I finally met someone who was pelvic PT, observed, got treated, and then um, the clinic that I started to work at in Tampa Bay sent me to the first class, and I went, and I became obsessed. <laughs> and it's not stop since. So I fell in love with the active female um, because I am an active female and I was an active female and I was ignored and I was told to go to a counselor for the pain that I was experiencing and I was told to ignore the leakage because it's normal and I was told that you just, it just means that you're working out hard enough. And so getting to those points and realizing that that is still being heard is what my mission is now. So it's just something I've become obsessed with because we are so disconnected from our vaginas that it's just ridiculous. You know? And even our spines too. Like we don't know how to connect things. We're not talking about it. Yeah. And it's just like, what do we do? Like if we see ourselves naked, we sit there and pick ourselves apart. And I just did that this morning. I looked in the mirror and I was just like, oh, I need to change that. And I stopped myself because I was like, oh. That's really, really aggressive and very rude of me to talk to myself that way because it's like, if you think about it, we've all been through so much that our bodies are such beautiful temples that we need to just learn to take care of. Yeah. 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 So we need to give our bodies some credit. But yeah, so that's like the um, summary of, of my backstory, I guess. And as far as like pelvic PT goes, I'm probably never going to quit. <laughs> I've decided that this is something that I'll never retire from. I just don't want to because I just love it so much. Um, I am transitioning a lot to online because I've realized it's just so selfish to stay only in Tampa Bay, you know, because there's so many people that watch me on Instagram or Facebook and they're reaching out and asking me questions and they deserve the help just as much as anyone else. And so I think, you know, it's been really, uh, which by the way, it's actually the second time I think that I've ever shared my story out loud so thank you all for that space that's pretty um not easy to do but it was it was good I think that it's part of the healing process and I can't tell you how empowering it is to get the messages from those of you that reach out to tell me that you're in the same spot because there's help out there and um, I can say that I'm totally leak free now and I have really a mind blowing so, shout out to Bill. Um, <laughs> he's gonna get. Um, I don't know. Actually, I didn't realize he listened to everything that I do on social media, which is quite entertaining. That's so sweet. It's so funny. I was just like, oh, I should probably, you know, be a little more cautious. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> not me. No, no, not me. So yeah, that's awesome though. But yeah, there's hope out there, and that's kind of where I come from and what I'm doing. Where I'm going, I don't really know. You know, I'm going online. I'm going global, international, there's just so many goals that I have. I would say intentions, not goals. I have intentions of reaching millions. And that's really what I do with the message that I have and just being able to speak out about, uh, like against those voices that are telling us that it's normal or against those voices that are telling us that, you know, there's not help out there because there is. And there's so many great pelvic PTs in the world and I would love to connect people with them. There's so many great chiros in the world and I would love to connect people with them. It's just, you know, it all starts with you understanding you're worth it and you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we come from. That's how our lives got flipped upside down. Now I'd like to take a minute to sit right there. <laughs> what, well, we're not in Belarus, so we have to say the same thing. <laughs> Let's do a parody. That would be so fun. We should make a parody of that song. <laughs> no, I can rap. I actually can, but we need to get um, the Queen Chanel Yoder on to rap. She's a rapper. Mm -hmm. She's a rapper. She's a rap star. Rap queen. You know, they say trap queen. She's a rap queen. <laughs> You guys will hear us shout out to a lot of people, um, by the way, because we have a lot of support going into this podcast and going into everything else, and we just really love to give credit where it's needed and deserved. 
and I don't think either of us would be sitting here actually without the support that we've had. So, but yeah, thank you. I don't know. Is there anything else that you want to add to our backstory? I don't think so. You have some pretty good like entries for that story. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. And we're gonna start peeling out the layers now, guys. And we're gonna start peeling back the layers. And like I said on the first one, we're gonna start bringing on people to interview. And there's just gonna be a lot of stuff. Um, I will say that if you have, if you get offended, I do curse. I have a sailor mouth sometimes. I do say vagina a lot. If you don't like the word vagina, it is an anatomical term. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but not sorry, really. Um, but yeah, I gotta show you this cool shirt that she has on. Oh, it's like I'm totally showing her boobs. But it's kind of cool. Like we like to wear weird T-shirts that people catch their attention, and they'll ask us like, "What does it mean?" But anyway. Oh yeah, that's true. It's it's like a squiggly thing. Why don't you explain it? It's the brain. <laughs> theory and essentially like we all know our fight or flight we have all learned that but we how much stress that we get through into the system um, there's actually a whole part of within kind of that system that you can activate to shift out of that and thrown in there very quite frequently with you know, stress and anxiety accidents you can through birth all of those so um breath work is one like super easy way yeah, to shift out of that fight or flight and more back into that rest state so um, the brain and nervous system are just pretty badass, which is why it's on a shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about all of that specifically on our podcast. I'm a big fan of breath work, and I'm a big fan of resetting your nervous system and understanding how things work. But super, yeah. super nerdy. Yeah. Cool. We're, we're nerds. That's <laughs> probably why we're here together. I feel like I need to work on my hands, too. <laughs> or maybe it's the light. Let's blame it on the light. <laughs> no, I'm pretty tan. Not really. Uh, anyways, okay, awesome. So, friends, that was uh, episode number two. So, we're super excited to bring you episode number three. Um, we are pumped for what is coming, and we've got so many cool things under our belt, and we're not going to expose them yet because you've got to keep coming back. Yeah. So, if you like podcasts, uh -huh. definitely share it. Yep. Subscribe. And find us on social media so we can connect with you. Yay. Dr. Madeline DC on Instagram or Madeline Turner on Facebook. Yep, at postpartum underscore physio on Instagram or Kaylee Garrett Zimmerman on Facebook. Awesome friends. Thank you so much and you have an awesome rest of your day. Bye.